let's get into some some weeds around process development. So the design efficiency advantage of mRNA is well stated, but it's my understanding that there's sort of a lack of sustainable and cost offensive, uh, cost effective that is manufacturing processes, and that that's a bottleneck. Uh, we don't have much in the way of standardized platform tech, as I as I mentioned, and we certainly didn't back in 2017 when uh, when Dr. Dickens got started. Um, is that understanding accurate? And uh, and if so, what's been your approach around building uh, out uh, process development for mRNA? And I'll, I'll start with you, Dr. Dickens. So we developed a platform um, approach, um, and as basically an up as with all biopharmaceutical processes, is an upstream uh, process and a downstream process. Um, so the upstream process is essentially a two-unit operation process that's scalable um, from five mils all the way up to 900 mils of material. Um, the first unit operation is a, pla is a once you select your plasmid, is a plasmid linearization step um, that takes the DNA, circular DNA, and makes it linear um, using a not one, not one enzyme. Um, that's, that's the first unit operation. And then we move into the IVT reaction, which is the trans, transcription, the D, DNA digest um, via DNA enzyme, and followed by quenching with EDTA. And that, that completes the, the unit operations for the upstream process. It takes about, um, about a half a day to a day to run those unit operations. Um, we have explored the different parameters and things of that nature. Um, certainly, raw materials has an impact to the quality profile of the messenger RNA that you produce. Um, mm -hmm. We can get into into that a bit a little later. Um, the downstream process is a four step process. We first part of that is diluting the material to prevent um, precipitation of the messenger RNA. We then take it through a tangential flow filtration step uh, for buffer exchange um, to prep for our first chromatography step, which is a size exclusion or multi mode chromatography, but mostly size exclusion. That mostly removes most of the double-stranded DNA that we you had, or RNA that you had mentioned earlier. Um, and that's a flow through uh, uh, using a Capticore 400 uh, chromatography step. And then we finish with a uh, two uh, preceding steps, which are final steps, which is another tangential flow filtration, which puts it in final um, bulk drug substance and then a filtration through a 0.2 micron filter. Um, and that, that process is both flexible and that we can change the reading frame um, around 1,000 to 3,000 base pairs of that reading frame um, and still get effective quality um, profile and, and, and translation in, uh, in vivo. Um, and then it also gives us scalability that I mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Uh, that's that's been usually benefit, and we've demonstrated that through a, a number of uh, immunogens um, across a lot of different disease, several di disease states. That demonstrates its flexibility as well as scalability from process development all the way all the way into uh, phase one clinical trials. Excellent, Roberta. What's the process development strategy look like uh, for mRNA candidates at Sicaris? Yeah, so we are in preclinical stage. So we are still developing those processes for ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of what Dr. Dickens has described is inherent in the approaches that we're going to be taking and are taking. And so as we go from preclinical and scaling up into uh, first in human and clinical trial materials, we'll be taking a lot of those learnings into consideration. And our scientists in technical development are, and research are hyper-focused in that area right now. Yeah, excellent. Um, Dr. Joe, how about how about that uh, Ultragenics? What does the process development strategy look like there? Sure. So uh, uh, our first MRI program is uh, is entering phase one study, and then uh, early development mostly focus on you know enabling IND and the smaller scale because it's a rare disease, and then uh, the scale and the batch size is uh, limited. And mm -hmm. then uh, first gen process, we start with some first gen process that's an uh, existing technology that leveraging CMO uh, technology, uh, especially in IVT, it's a small scale in bottles and then uh, and then followed by purification process. And most of them like uh, uh, non-scalable, so maybe up to uh, 10 gram per batch, that's it. And so for late stage development, um, basically because it's a, a we are, um, 
So for the first MRE, it's a, a chronic dosing, and then we're facing like a, a much higher demand um, per year. So for that, we actually develop second gen process. And the second gen process is basically a same uh, flow, basically, uh, you start with IVT and followed by uh, chromatography stuff and then the LMP formulation. But for the second gen process, we are focusing on uh, one is the scalability. Basically, volume wise is much higher. And then uh, we use uh, reactors, increase IVT volume, a chromatography uh, style. We uh, uh, change out some of the stuff that uh, has a, a scalable uh, limitation and then use more, uh, a big, can, can scale up to more than 50 to 100 gram per batch. And then uh, also LP wise, uh, we uh, leverage newer technology and then that make the LP sizes more uh, uniform. And then uh, right now we are uh, in the process of uh, uh, implementing this uh, late stage process. And uh, all of this late stage process is uh, 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 intra, intra, uh, internally uh, developed. And then uh, so uh, we're looking forward to implement this in the phase two and three studies.